Our cities are pretty much like this. Busy red dots that often hold millions of people. Places that are constantly in motion. And then there are towns, smaller dots that hope to be big someday. To do all this, a city takes in a lot from the planet. Food, oil, water, wood and much more. And as they become bigger, so does their diet. But how do we feed these cities? By taking oil from the oceans, by bringing food from the villages, and wood from the forests. And all of it comes at a price. Except, of course, the air. The oxygen we breathe comes free of cost from the over 400 billion trees from across the planet. And how many of these trees are there in our cities? Well, certainly not as many as the cities need. And every day, we cut down almost 36,000 hectares of forests from the planet. Not a nice picture at all. With all these little dots bubbling to become a bigger city, we would need that many more trees. So, can these cities and towns ever have as many trees as they need? Delhi is one such mega city. The city has been a metropolis for a long time, but in the past 20 years, it has become even more important as an economy. The city is home to more than 16 million people, more people than cities like Bangalore and Pune put together. There are more firms here than ever before. As a result, the migrants to the city have been growing. But migration is not something new. For the people who came here in ancient times, it was a city that fell at the tail end of the Aravli Hills. The Aravlis are an ancient range, over 1,000 million years old. In comparison, the Himalayas are just 50 million years old. For a long time, the Aravli belt of the city was undisturbed. It was a rich, deciduous forest. On the other end of the city lay the Yamuna. While today the river flows on the eastern side of the city, it wasn't always so. More than 4,000 years ago, the river used to flow to the west of the Aravalis. Over time, the river changed its course, eroding the land around the hill, making the soil fine and fertile. It also left behind these wetlands, Some of them, like the Najafgarh Jhil in Delhi and the Barkhal and Surajkund Lake in the neighboring Haryana, are still alive. All these water sources don't just feed our cities. These wetlands and the ridge too are home to almost one third of the birds found in India. But cities grow, and as we know, they eat a lot more as they grow. 
Delhi has always been growing and the pace became even faster after the year 1992. The country's economy opened up, the demand for land to build homes, offices, malls and hotels kept growing. The land across the hill and the river was becoming less and less green. The rich forest in the city was encroached upon. In 1996, the Delhi High Court declared the ridge as a protected zone. It did not help much, as the authorities turned a blind eye to these constructions. The city needed to connect with its satellite towns. Along came flyovers on the Yamuna's wetlands. It did not stop there. The constructions continued. Now, if you see river all the way from Bazirabad down till Okhla, it has been in a one way or the other, you were constructed on it. Subsequent on the eastern bank, the first Akshardham came in. And now we have built in Commonwealth Games Village. Why was that? The 10,000 hectares of land of the, I, I shouldn't call it land, I should call it river flood plains, which are left, that's what they've got their eyes on as a real estate. Delhi had a number of streams that used to feed the city and the Yamuna. Today, almost all of them have turned into drains. But the city is not without hope. It is still one of the greenest cities in the country. And from parts of the city, the skyline still looks like this. A lot of these areas that you see have been shaped by the British since they were the ones who designed the new part of New Delhi. They removed a lot of the native deciduous trees and replaced them with largely evergreen ones. As a result, there are over 500 kinds of trees in the city. But not every exotic species is good. When the British came to the city, the ridge was a deciduous forest, thorny and scrubby. To make it greener, they brought in a Central American species, Prosopis juliflora or Vilaiti kikar. It was a bad decision. Today, almost the entire stretch of the ridge is covered with this invasive species. During the last 150 years, this Prosopi Juliflora multiplied, invaded the entire ridge and eliminated 450 native species. It has a deep root system. The root system can go to a depth of water table from where it takes the water. And whereas the native species don't have such a deep root system. It produces toxic chemicals when the leaves are decomposed. And with result, that toxic substance do not prevent the germination of the native species. But every wild bush can be pruned. In the southern part of the city lies this biodiversity park, where the native species of the Aravalis are being brought back. Evolution of any species, it is together, not in isolation. They have evolved in a particular area because of adaptations. 
of you know millions of years of adaptations so if you are losing one species you are going to lose the dependent species upon it you are losing one species uh, nilotica or any of the tree species upon which since long the birds are nesting the insects are feeding it is a correlation butterflies as a host plant maybe it is a tree or vegetation uh, native vegetation in that area they are coming for egg laying it is a host plant for butterfly and if it is not there certainly you are going to lose those species and the longer run what will happen the non native species will dominate the area and the native species whether it is uh, your flora or fauna they will be just disappearing a city's growth cannot be reversed we will only grow bigger the population of the city will reach 20 million in a few years i will live the way i want and if garbage has to go the government has to do if i need good water water the government has to give if the air has to be pure the government has to do how can the government do if we keep on buying new cars and if each house wants to have bigger and bigger diesel cars then if you say that the air has to improve and it's the government's responsibility i don't think any responsible government will be able to you know do this for the environment we could take care of our waste or better still we could recycle it or we could learn to consume less but growing as we do can we ever have as many trees as we need maybe not but we can begin to protect what we already have begin to see these green spaces not just as our lungs but as someone's home too